work. So I'll go through and answer questions that way too. So, okay, I have two, two eyeballs. I'm going to get started. So I'm going to start with um, breakfast because believe it or not, it's probably going to take the longest out of everything. And I'm going to do the powered up breakfast crumble. Um, it's actually featured in the current catalog, but it's one that you can search on uh, my website as well. My kids absolutely love it. It is a new favorite in the house and I love it because it's got loads of protein that they don't even know about. I use the super green smoothie booster so they get a little bit of wheatgrass and matcha and spirulina and all kinds of awesomeness that way. Um, it does have, this one does have 40 milligrams of caffeine because of the matcha. So I definitely mix it into a whole batch. That way I know that each kid is not getting anywhere near 40 milligrams of caffeine at breakfast time because we don't need that around here. Um, it's delicious. So I'm going to make that one in the square steamer. I did a little bit of prep here so that it, I can keep this to about our 15 minutes. So this is the square steamer. It's got four cups of frozen berries in there. Uh, and the rest of the recipe is that we add, it says add a tablespoon of the summer berry. I do half a tablespoon mixed in with the fruit. Um, and then I put another half tablespoon actually in the crumble topping. And this is where I'm going to throw the super greens in as well. I put it right in with the berries that I'm going to put in the microwave and cook. Um, so it's a nice little powder. I sprinkle it around and then I can stir it into the berries and the kids don't even know it's there. And then to help mix in the sweet dip, um, it's a little bit of lemon juice. So I'm just going to cut that bad boy in half. Use the uh, two-in-one citrus press. So you've got the lemon side as well as the lime inserts a little bit smaller. And it's designed so that we can squeeze all the juice out of there into whatever we're making without any seeds and pulp. So it basically turns your fruit inside out, squishes out all the juice, but you can see it leaves all the seeds there in the bottom. I'm going to give it a quick stir with uh, just a regular old spoon to mix in the greens, the lemon juice, and the, um, what am I talking about here? The summer berry, yeah. And then, because it's frozen berries, I'm going to give it five minutes in the microwave on full power without the lid. And that gets it all nice and juicy. And while that's in, I've mixed um, one cup of rolled oats with one full scoop of the Optimum Vegan Protein Blend. So that's where we get the hidden protein in breakfast. There's 20 grams of protein per scoop. Um, each scoop is one serving where a lot, I know a lot of protein powders on the market, two scoops is one serving. So that's one, um, it's a third of a cup, I believe. Um, so there's one full scoop of that, as well as half a tablespoon of the summer berry and uh, a cup, just over a cup of rolled oats mixed in there as my um, dry ingredients and then half a cup of melted coconut oil. Uh, I'm using coconut oil, you can use butter. I use the coconut oil because we have the baby who's allergic to dairy in the house. So um, you can sub your healthy fat whichever way you like. Uh, I like the coconut oil just because I know it is a healthy fat. Not that butter is not. It's better for you than margarine. Um, so then you just stir that in with the protein powder um, and the oats to give it the nice crumbly texture. And then when the berries are ready, I'm going to mash them around with the fork and spread the crumb on top and then give it another few minutes in the microwave. So while the berries are finishing, I'm going to get started on what we're going to do for the dinner portion of our cooking class tonight. I'm doing fajitas. So right now I'm going to make the salsa and the guac because we have three and a half minutes. We can probably get both made. I'm using the Good Mexican Real Fast kit tonight. Um, and you get the whole kit comes in this nice little box with five little recipe cards. I'm going to try and show um, how to use all the products that come in the kit in what we're making for dinner and lunch today. Um, the recipe cards are awesome. If they, if you don't like the recipes, then you can also search my website and you can basically search by product. So you can throw in um, guacamole mix or fajita mix into the search bar and it will bring up all the recipes that use those mixes. So I'm going to do the guac and then the salsa. Um, 
I've used frozen gua or frozen avocado, so I have about half a cup here. I'm not going to make the full recipe on the jar. I'm going to do about half a tablespoon of the guacamole mix in with my avocados. They're not frozen solid anymore. They already frosted. Um, if you use the frozen solid ones, you'd probably want to throw them in the food processor. And then half a lime. So I cut my lime in half, and I'm going to take the lemon out and put the lime in the smaller half of the citrus press here. Give it a good squeeze. Get all that juice in there. The lime juice in your guacamole also helps so that it doesn't turn brown, which is awesome. And then you just mash it around with your fork. Squash it all together. This one is a favorite for my five-year-old and the one-year-old. They're both big guacamole fiends. Um, the five-year-old is the one who usually makes it. What I'm cooking right now is actually going to go to school with her as her lunch tomorrow. We make her fajitas in her lunchbox. It's like a, a pinwheel roll-up kind of thing. I'll throw the chicken and the guac in there with some cheese and she loves it. So there is your guacamole. Um, I will let it sit for, I mean it's going to sit overnight, but if you were making guac for a party or your own Mexican fiesta night, give it about 10 minutes to rehydrate. Um, because all the spice blends that we're using are freeze-dried, so you want to give them a couple minutes to mix with the moisture of the avocado and the lime juice. Now I'm going to do salsa. I chopped up a tomato. Um, I just used the organic vine ripe ones from Costco, but basically use whatever kind of tomato you like. If you don't want the raw, uncooked tomato texture in your salsa, um, my husband's not a huge fan of that one. So we use tinned tomatoes um, if we're making large batches of salsa. For the kids, I do the fresh because the five-year-old loves to chop up the tomato and throw in her salsa mix herself. But if I'm making a big jar um, to replace like a old El Paso, Tostitos, whatever, um, use the PC brand um, chopped tomatoes, no salt added. They're stewed, so they have the, more like the texture that you might be used to from a jarred salsa mix. Um, and it's easier to trick people with that one. And my favorite thing about our Poco Picante mix is that it is spicy enough that you don't notice that there's no sugar. That's the big thing about any jarred salsas and tomato products that you're going to buy in the store. There's tons and tons of hidden sugar in there. Like almost 30 grams of sugar in your salsa. We don't want that. No. So chopped up tomato. Again, it's only half a cup of tomato like I did half a cup of the avocado. If you're making the full recipe, even, here's my thing, even if you're making the full recipe that's on the Poco jar, I would say use half as much of the spice blend that it calls for because this one is really spicy. So if you use the full recipe, you might blow people's, the roof of people's mouth off. So I heard my crumble beep. I'm going to throw the crumble top and put it back in so that we're not uh, monopolizing our time here. So you can see the berries have softened up real nice in there. I'm going to smash them around with the spoon a little bit just to break up, because I've used the four berry blend, um, the blackberries are really big, and I find that my girls prefer if I mash them a little. If you don't need to mash them in your house, don't mash them in your house. Um, I'm gonna just give them a little squish, and then pour on our crumble mix here, and kind of just stir it around on the top, so that it covers the whole berry top. And this one, like, really, this breakfast is kind of like dessert for breakfast. It's that delicious. I feel like maybe I didn't do enough oats in here. That's okay. Okay, so there is our topping. Get all the yummy goodness in there. So we've covered the fruit with the, the crumble, and then you put it in for another five minutes, and that's what's going to mix the berry juices in with your oats. And that will be breakfast ready. We're going to finish the salsa now. So chopped tomatoes, half a tablespoon of our salsa mix, and a little bit more lime juice. Let's see if there's any left in there. No. The other half of the lime. One, one lime makes a perfect Mexican dinner night and then give it a little stir as well. Mix in your salsa mix. Again, like uh, I said with the avocados and the guacamole mix, give it a couple minutes to sit so that the tomato juices and the lime juices mix in 
with your spices and rehydrate them and the flavors mix in really well together. So that's your condiments ready for your fajita dinner. I did also um, chop up the chicken earlier, so I'm just going to use the rectangular steamer because I only have one breast. If you're cooking for two or six or ten, Amanda, <laughs> you're probably going to want more than one chicken boob. Um, and if you're doing more than one, then I recommend using one of the bigger steamers. So this one's the multi-purpose. This is the one that Cindy was talking about today. I shared the video about this one today. Um, Amanda asked if we can make larger batches of popcorn. This is the multi-purpose. This is the biggest one. It holds, I think it holds six liters. Um, you can easily make three and a half to four cups of dry pasta. So that work cooks up to about six cups of pasta in here. Um, you can make, I think I've made as much as three cups of dry rice and quinoa in here. You could probably make more like five. Um, it has a large capacity. And if you were making fajitas for a large family and had more than one chicken breast cut up, this is the one you want. It does also come with a tray that stacks inside. This guy right here. So you can stack it up inside and fit your rice or your pasta underneath. Put the tray in, stack your chicken and your veg, put the lid on and steam your entire dinner in here. These guys are awesome for like students living in residence or people who have just recently moved out and don't have super amazing cooking skills but want to make their friends think they have super amazing cooking skills. Awesome. Also, the lifesaver of the busy mother after school cooking dinner, not wanting to burn past it to the bottom of the pot or overflow rice or destroy all sorts of other things. I use this every day. Because we're not making that much chicken. I'm going to use this guy. So this guy is great for fresh hot lunch. So this is one breast. You can throw in peppers and add your seasoning and make fresh fajitas in the microwave at work and save yourself some mega cash and also some gross ingredients. It's great for omelets. So the omelet maker is a superstar, but it only holds two eggs. If you want more than two eggs, this one's good for up to four. The square steamer, you could probably put like eight and the multi-purpose, you can do a dozen in there. Um, is also good for reheating leftovers. I use this when I'm heating up leftovers to throw into a thermos to send to school for the girls. I can get it to the temperature that I want, throw it in their thermos, and it's still warm by lunchtime for them. Um, but again, I'm going to do the breast in here just on its own. I'm going to sprinkle with, I don't know, I'd say about a teaspoon and a half of the fajita seasoning just because I do only have the one breast in there and it's going to be lunch for the five-year-old so she doesn't need it nearly as spicy as I might prefer. I'm going to give a wee bit of the lime juice just for flavor not because you need the added um, liquid in the steamer and then I'm going to toss the chicken in the seasoning. Now this part is the part where it's way more fun to do a cooking class in person because when I start cooking this, you'll be able, if you were here, you could, it would be smell-o-vision. You would be able to smell how delicious this is. All right, so the chicken is ready. I'm going to pop it into the microwave as soon as it beeps with my crumble. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to show you how we're also going to turn dinner into lunch. I'm going to make a salad dressing using the nacho cheese. I'm going to make a spicy salsa dressing so that if you have leftover fajita chicken and peppers from dinner tonight, you can make yourself a salad or nourish bowl tomorrow with a fantastic Tex-Mex dressing that makes everybody wish that your lunch was their lunch. So this is the whole cook once, eat twice idea. Um, Amanda, I can't help you because you are cooking for so many people. I imagine that there is nothing left. There are no leftovers after dinner time. <laughs> um, so you maybe don't get to cook once, eat twice. But if you have the super ease of these amazing steamers, you can cook fresh instead of having to worry about cook once, eat twice, and having lots of leftovers. So I heard the beef. We're going to switch out the crumble. Oh, it looks delicious. I will show you in a minute. I'm going to put the chicken in. Because it's only one breast and it's completely thawed, I'm going to give it like a minute and a half and then check on it. And that's enough time to make my dressing. So I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of red vinegar. I think it's about a quarter cup each. 
If you don't like red wine vinegar, you can pick a vinegar that you like. Um, white wine, uh, white balsamic, apple cider vinegar. Uh, the flavors in the nacho cheese mix are probably enough that you don't really need to worry too much about um, what kind of vinegar you use. Pick one you like the flavor of. I am going to use olive oil and red wine because that's what the basic recipe I'm following says. Um, it says a quarter cup of each. If you like an oilier dressing, use more oil. If you like a vinegarier, that's a real word, uh, dressing, use more vinegar. So it's one and one, which makes you approximately half a cup of dressing. And then pop the funnel in the cruet. So the cruet comes pre-labeled, so I didn't have to use another measuring cup to actually measure out my oil and vinegar. The silicone funnel is awesome because it is bendy fits right in, fills the entire hole, and then I can throw in the, I'm, I think I'm just going to do one tablespoon of the seasoning because I've never made this dressing before. Yes, that's right, live right here, I'm making a new dressing. Um, and I find that for the most part, our seasonings are pretty powerful, and one tablespoon is probably enough. Where did I put the lid for my crit? Give it a good shake. And there is our Tex-Mex salad dressing for tomorrow. So then to make your leftovers into a delicious nourish bowl, you're going to want to throw your favorite mixed greens, whether it's spinach, spring mix, rocket, all of the above, um, a portion of your healthy grains. So maybe some quinoa, some rice. You can have a bun with it if you want. Dump in some of the leftover fajita chicken. Cut up a rainbow of beautiful vegetables, so peppers. You can use the... Um, Veggie twist and spiral slicer, spiralize in some zucchini, some carrots to give it color, crunch, texture that you like. This guy has two ends. One end is the um, noodle spiralizer, so you can get your zucchini noodles. And the other end is a ribbon. Um, you know what? I'm going to grab a cucumber because I got one close. Let me show you. So, noodle end... Shove the cucumber in like it's pencil sharpener and twist like it's a pencil sharpener and you have cucumber noodles. Beautiful, beautiful cucumber noodles to add to your salads for delicious crunch and flavor. Um, the kids love it because they love cucumbers, but why not give them a fun shape? If you don't need to make it fun for kids, you can make it fun for yourself. The other end is the ribbon end, so you get nice thick spirals. This one's great if you want to make like, so if it's Sunday brunch on Mother's Day and you want to make these beautiful um, roses out of your cucumbers. And there you go. Decorate your plate. Put a little cherry tomato in there. But you can also do this with a zucchini and make great like lasagna noodles. I love this spiralizer. It's a beauty. I heard my chicken beep so I'm going to go check that. And then we're pretty much done. And I'm going to let you guys go check out what else I've shared. I'm going to give it another minute, it looks like. Stir it around a bit. Um, you can do a full breast if you didn't want to cut it into pieces. It needs a little bit more time. Because I cut it into pieces, I figured I'd start with a minute and a half. I'm going to give it another minute and a half. And that will be us ready. So, salad dressing for our nourish bowl as our lunch tomorrow. Guacamole, delicious, ready to go. Salsa, made with our poco picante salsa mix. And we spiralized some great veggies for our nourish bowl as well. We have this delicious breakfast that is definitely going to be served to my children tomorrow. Thank you for making me do this tonight because now I have breakfast ready tomorrow. I don't have to do it. Um, it's delicious. It's full of protein. It's got fruit. It's got super greens, super greens, protein powder, summer berry sweet dip mix. Our dressing has nacho cheese mix, our fajita chicken, our poco picante salsa, the cruet, the, the two-in-one citrus press. I'm going to show you a couple other things I love. The four-in-one spice spoon, you have a tablespoon. A teaspoon, you flip it over, it's got a quarter teaspoon and a half teaspoon. These are your four most popular measurements, all in one spoon. They fit into every jar we have. 
all the way to the bottom of the super tall ones. This is the biggest complaint about all spice spoons, measuring spoons that don't fit into spice jars. Well, problem solved. They do now. Um, I'm going to show you a couple other things that I know Cindy talked about because I want to show you like what they look like in real life. So the silicone muffin pan is a great one. You can make a dozen perfectly portioned muffins in here and two of these, so 24 muffins, fit very happily onto the sheet pan. I know that was the one that Crystal was asking about. So there's one and there is room on there for another one. The sheet pan itself is very large, as you can see, standing next to me here. It does not come with, but you can buy this silicone baking mat. So this sheet pan is two years old and I use it all the time. It's clean like this because I use the bacon roll, which is awesome. It fits, it's got a lip, as you can see, it comes all the way up to the edge so you can cook stuff, do a sheet pan dinner on here. So you could do this whole good Mexican on the sheet pan. Cut up three breasts, cut up six peppers, lay it all out on the pan, shove it in the oven for 20 minutes, dinner is done. Um, I love this thing. The other pan that Cindy shared, and I know is a big favorite, is the crisper. So this one is full of holes and it is ridged, if you can see there, for airflow. So you can put your oven fries, your homemade chicken fingers, chicken nuggets, pizza, etc. on here. You don't need to flip. The air flows through and around and cooks everything crispy and even without you having to flip it. You set a timer, you come back. Again, busy mom's savior. The only thing about pizza dough, don't mash it. It will squeeze through. Um, but if you want to reheat leftover pizza, instead of trying to get it nice and crispy again by microwaving it, because that's never going to happen, put on here. Crispy again. Delicious. The other thing um, I talked about was the Good Mexican Real Fast kit. So all of the spices that we use, the fajita, the nacho cheese, the poco picante, and the guacamole come in the collection if you want them all together. Everything is also available individually. I'm going to share some slides very soon about pretty much everything we have to offer. So feel free to ask questions. Um, last but not least, I guess, is the chicken. Everybody wants to see if it's done. It smells very delicious. The five-year-old is happily going to enjoy this in her lunch tomorrow. Another fork here. Here is the finished product. I'm going to take a piece out of here and hold it up so you can see. Um, I cut it in half. You can see it is completely cooked. I hope you can see that. And to make you believe me, I'm going to eat it. Mm. <laughs> it's juicy. You can see the juices do run out of it. I'm going to pick up my phone for a minute because it's easier to show you that way. Here, let's try this. The juices are in there, so you definitely do not need to add extra oil or water or anything when you're using the steamers. I'm going to show you the crumble as well. Delicious crumble and all of the other spoils of war in this kitchen. Um, that's what I got for you. Thank you for watching this section. Um, I'm gonna be with you for approximately another 10 minutes. I have some posts to share. I'm gonna share the shopping slides and then I'll be here till nine. Um, I'm not gonna be live like this anymore. I'm gonna actually shut down the camera and go sit at my computer and answer your questions. So give me two minutes. I'm gonna share the shopping slides and then ask me all the questions you want to know. Thanks for joining me.